everybody. Let's talk about defining the population in your study. There, as you're going through and you're trying to define it, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. So I just want to break it down for you to show you how you go from the broadest population down to your study sample and how you might consider describing that for your study. So let's start, first of all, by talking about what each of these um, populations are, how they're defined. So your general population or the population of interest is the group that you would like to be able to generalize the results of your study to. Okay, this could be school teachers, this could be police officers, this could be financial managers, it could be human resource managers, leaders, pastors, that general population um, is what you're describing here. In the study, then, you would narrow down and you would talk about your target population. So this is the segment of your population from which you ultimately want to get your sample data. It's the people you're going to approach to collect the data, okay? So if you are looking at a general population of school teachers, your target population might be school teachers in a specific school district or in a particular county or in a particular uh, college, that's how you would narrow it down to your target population, okay? And ultimately, you want to think about how you're going to collect the data, and that's included as part of your target population, okay? Then the next step down is your study sample, and these are actually the individuals that participate in your study and are the final source of your data, okay? So, let me kind of walk through what this looks like using my study so you can kind of see how I approached it. And um, in another video shortly, I'll talk about how you write about this in chapter three. So in my study, my population of interest was instructional designers in the United States. Now, clearly I can't go and interview or gather surveys from all the instructional designers in the United States. So I needed to narrow it down to a target population based on how I was going to approach them to get my data. In my case, I went through LinkedIn, okay? So my target population, the statement that I use in my defense um, decks is this, instructional designers in the United States who have a LinkedIn account and are either working predominantly at home and predominantly in the office. And that last part about working at home or working in the office is key because that's part of my inclusion criteria and that was my independent variable. I had to have this information in order to separate the instructional designers into the two groups that I needed, okay? So this was my very specific statement about who my target population was and who I was going to approach to request data, okay? Now, my study sample, I specifically targeted 154 participants. Now I did this and I'll show you here in a second. I did this through G Power calculation and I needed to do calculations to know how many respondents I needed for each group. So I was looking at those working at home versus those working in the office. I needed to have a target number for each group so that my study would be strong enough, the results would be, uh, the power would be strong enough uh, for the results to be generalizable. Okay. So I went from a general population, I showed what my target was, and then I identified what my target study sample was. Um, if you've seen um, my dissertation, you know that uh, I exceeded the target, which is fantastic, and ended up with um, something around 435 total participants, which is awesome. All right, but this was my target. So let me show you how I laid this out in my um, proposal and my dissertation defense in the slide. So you'll see, I wrote out my population, general population, instructional designers in the United States. I did some research to show kind of an estimated number of how many instructional designers or um, the Bureau of Labor calls them instructional coordinators to give a sense for how many people are out there. And part of that is the argument for feasibility. Is it possible for me to actually get the numbers that I need to complete my study. Then I identified my target population, and you'll recognize this phrase here, and then I added another statement, the size of the target population in the design instructional design groups that I was targeting on LinkedIn 
was 87,000 plus. Those memberships changed, so I just put a plus sign there, okay? Then my G power calculations, I was doing two uh, different procedures for my two research questions. Um, and I'm sorry, this is focused more toward quantitative. Um, so qual qualitative is gonna be a little bit different, but for quantitative, I did G power calculations for both of the procedures that I needed to do, independent samples t-test and the moderated multiple regression. And you'll see for the, the t-test, I needed more. So what I ended up doing is going with the minimum sample here, and that's how I started to get my target sample. And what I did is I adjusted my numbers up 20% to account for any incompletes um, or any duplicate surveys. So my minimum sample was 128 with 64 in each group, and I targeted 154 with 77 in each group. Okay, and I broke that all down in my defense. So you can see how it goes from the very broad population of interest to the target population that describes who I'm going to go to to actually gather my data. And then I defined my calculations and identified my target sample, study sample size. Um, and this was for my proposal defense. So I hope this helps you as you're thinking through who your population is, how you're going to approach them, and how do you describe them in your dissertation.